Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Expand Insights. I'm your host, Ranshu Mandhiyan. Here at Expand Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats, and immigrants who have made Philippines their home. So tonight on Expat Insights, we don't really have foreigners, foreigners, but people who have been in this country for a very long time and can be called Filipinos. The subject matter of our discussion tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is education of a special kind called the Waldorf education. And my guest tonight, the first one, is a gentleman called Roger Simon, Roger T. Simon, a Qigong facilitator and also a father to a three-year-old boy. My second guest, a young Indian Filipina lady, coordinator Sujata Muki of the Institute for Science Steiner. Ideas in practice. Ideas in practice. And Dr. Malu Medrano, also a parent and a teacher at the ISI Center. At the yes. St. Mikhail. At the St. Mikhail place mm -hmm. where they teach Waldorf methods. Good evening. Welcome Good to evening. Experience Science. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> You're okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself starting from Dr. Malu. Okay. okay. Um, I've been in the Waldorf education movement or the Steiner education movement since my uh, children were about um, toddler age. And then um, I've been teaching for almost seven years now as a nurturer in a Steiner-inspired daycare in Makati. Okay. Perhaps uh, before we talk about being a Waldorf uh, person, <laughs> let's talk about ourselves first, okay. then bring in the topic of Waldorf. So, Madam Sujata, Muki, go, please. Madam Sujata. Uh, yes, I was born and raised here in the Philippines. I like to say that I have uh, foreign parts, but locally assembled. Okay, that's good. Cool. <laughs> and uh, I've been involved in uh, being a consultant to various nonprofits for a very long time. And uh, I just love being here, and this is my home. This is where I need to be. All right, so you look foreign, but you are very local. I think so, yes. Okay, welcome to Expat Insight. Dr. Simon. Yes. Dr. Simon. Roger Simon. Yes, I'm uh, originally from Hawaii, a retired medical professional now, and I've uh, got a three year old son, and I'm just, you know, enjoying the Philippines and looking to create the best educational opportunity for my, for my child. Good. Welcome to Expand Insights. Roger Simon has been on this show a year and a half ago, and he was talking about alternative medicine without that time. So if you want to catch him before this show, he's on YouTube of Expand Insights. So uh, now uh, let's bring this home to what is Waldorf system or what is the Waldorf form of education? Uh, the Waldorf form of education is an educational method that was influenced by the ideas of an Austrian philosopher who lived in the last century, Rudolf Steiner. Steiner. Uh, yes, okay. Steiner. Not Steiner, um, Steiner. Well, some will say Steiner, some will say, sh say Steiner, but mm -hmm. um, Rudolf Steiner, I believe, is the correct way of pronouncing his um, last name. He was born in what is now known as Croatia. And uh, he was a man who had these, he didn't just have opinions about the different disciplines of life, but he actually came up with methods of how to uh, improve humanity, whether it was in the realm of dance, drama, uh, agriculture, medicine, education, and particularly in education, he came up with the ideas of how to be able to bring out the best in each child understanding that each child has a destiny to fulfill and thus he developed a system of education called the Steiner method or alternatively known also as the Waldorf educational system. Well, that's pretty long. See if I can <laughs> remember all of it, but what I remember is improve humanity in all disciplines. That's what he did. Uh, so how does that make him any different from everybody else who's trying to do the same thing? He looked at the human being in totality, uh, yeah. mind, body, spirit. And uh, he looked at the child really as a spiritual being that really had a, a destiny to fulfill. And I, I'm not sure how the other educational methodologies deal with that, but here it's imbibed in the teachers, also known as nurturers, that they have a very special role to play in the child's overall development. Right. Okay. I think I got it. Roger, your take on this. Uh, your well, uh, well, as a, of this, yeah. Yeah, as a parent, I mean, I think we all want our child to be, become great human beings. Uh, what's nice about the Steiner-inspired method or the Waldorf method 
is that there's really a focus on experiential learning, on child-centered learning, and creating a lifelong love of learning. So these are things that I think are traditionally absent. You know, one of your previous guests, uh, uh, Peter Senge, had written a book called uh, uh, Schools That Learn, Learning Revolution, and he's really pointing out the fact that many of the educational models we have today are from the industrial age, and they really aren't suited to bringing children into this complicated world that we have today. And what's nice about the Steiner Method is, is it's holistic mm -hmm. and it's naturalistic. So let me hold you on that, uh, the industrial method of teaching or <laughs> uh, the method of teaching that kind of supports the industrial age. Mm -hmm. you know? uh -huh. Let me hold you that and come back to you for that. Uh, Dr. Malou, uh, your uh, entry, your perspective, your yeah. involvement with Dr. Steiner's work. Steiner. Steiner. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, the world of education, actually, for me, it is um, looking at the scientifically now in research has been proven that um, there needs to be a balance between the two hemispheres of the brain. And this education actually um, uh, addresses both hemispheres of the brain in a way that um, it is um, the, uh, the curriculum is imbued with arts and music. And at the same time, it's also um, in the sciences, so it gives them, eventually, the children have a balanced way of thinking. Mm. Okay, so that is an assumption that there is a left brain thinking yes. and right brain <laughs> thinking, but from where I come from, I thought that it's always whole brain thinking. <laughs> it was just defined that way. All right, so now, uh, uh, what's happening here in the Philippines about, uh, with the work of Steiner? What are we doing? Um, there are several uh, Waldorf schools we'll hold, here. We'll come back to that question. I asked. It's here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go, uh, there are several Waldorf schools here in the Philippines, the oldest yeah. of which is the Manila Waldorf School, which right now their campus is in Timberland Heights in San Mateo Rizal. Uh, Manila Waldorf School uh, was a pioneer, and uh, just in this decade alone, in the 2000s, there have been so many other initiatives that have come up all throughout from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. We have um, a Steiner School in, two, in Iloilo, yeah. we have daycares, we have kindergartens, we have a school in, uh, in Quezon City, we have one even, a new one uh, that has just come up in Davao and uh, in Cebu. So the, the movement is growing because I think that parents are hungry. I think they're hungry mm -hmm. for a particular kind of educational system that really is truly nurturing and not just an educational system that feeds information, uh, tying up to that industrial, industrial uh, So let's yes. go back. Uh, <laughs> we, we have one minute. We can't go back to that. Huh? Okay, so, uh, but I'd like to raise the question, I'd like you to think about this during the break, is that if we uh, were good for industrial oriented education a hundred years ago, at that time we thought that was good. Yeah. Today we are thinking that maybe this holistic way of teaching may be good. How do we know for sure which one will be right a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now? So uh, think about that. Let's take a break and we'll come back and talk to you about that. Is that good? Sure. Okay. You good? Okay. So let's take that one and break. One minute break and we'll come back and talk to Dr. Simon, Dr. Sujata, <laughs> and <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Malou about <laughs> the Waldorf <laughs> method of education. I'm your host, uh, Raju Mandia. Stay watching Experian Science. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome back to Expert Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandian. We are talking about the Waldorf method of education with Dr. Simon, Ms. Sujata Muki, and, and Dr. Malu Medrano. There are so many doctors here. <laughs> Maybe you're all doctors. Is that fine? You're okay? Yeah. So, yes, Roger. Uh, ha, Roger or anybody else, how do we know that we are right today? If we thought we were right 100 years ago? Well, the answer would be that we're both right. Society's need and the needs mm -hmm. of an individual to evolve sometimes are not necessarily one and the same. So from a societal point of view, we need people who can do menial labor, who can work for minimum wage, and the way that's created in a traditional educational system is by having an average and having at least half the students in any given class always believe that they're below average and that they can't aspire to higher education, that they can't aspire to greater ideals. This is the difference between schooling and training and education. And this is the idea, and, and I believe, at least in some of the more
more progressive education forms, that we're really going to go more child-centered. And we are going to balance the needs of society, but not put one over the other. So would, uh, let me, uh, I need to understand that a bit more, like keeping them below average or sustaining an average. What does that mean? Can you, like, give me an example? Like, what do they do or what do we do? Well, I can only say with respect to Waldorf is that, that there's no emphasis on grading. There's oh. no emphasis on testing. Mm -hmm. Yet this has become the single most important thing to a parent today. There's a $4 billion shadow industry, shadow education industry, which is all about tutoring children to pass examinations after they've done their regular schooling. Oh, okay, okay, I see it. So here's a school system, millions of dollars invested in that time and people, and then there's a backup, and you're saying this is all a big, mm. has become mm. something that's not working well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah? yeah. that's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Your take on that, Dr. Maloum? Yeah, uh, the way I see it, um, Education is dictated by the economic needs of society now um, mm -hmm. in the industrial revolution. Like if they say like, for example, here in the Philippines, they say, oh, nurses are in demand and everybody puts up a nursing school mm. and everybody sends their children, most people send their children to nursing school to satisfy the demands of economics and society. Whereas in Waldorf education, we recognize the individual destiny of each child that they have a certain purpose in this world and it doesn't necessarily have to tailor the needs of society. It mm. Oh, okay. So let me <laughs> understand this. I'm kind of, kind of thick this morning. So you're saying so we do a bit <laughs> reactive, uh, our uh, processes are reactive, that we yes. just fill in the short term yes. needs of what we mm -hmm. need, but we should really look beyond that. So mm -hmm. if we focus, if we cater to only short term needs, we are kind of harming the individual and the society yes. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. So uh, how, how is Waldorf any different uh, now? Can you now tell well, us Well, as a teacher, um, we um, have un, like recognized the, uh, the individuality of the child and really um, try to understand what this child's destiny is. How, how do you figure it out? What's the process? What's the diagnostics for it? In Waldorf, uh, uh, Madam Mokey. Uh, I think most of the, the information that we have on Waldorf is anecdotal rather than on uh, statistics. Mm. And it's not the, the role of the teacher to, to determine what is the destiny, yes. but it's really m allowing an environment in the yeah. school so that this yeah. destiny unfolds. unfolds. Yes. Uh -huh. So, for example, uh, the, the educational methodology is very age appropriate from zero to seven mm -hmm. years old. The emphasis is in, in, the, in the Waldorf in the system. system. Yeah. In the Waldorf we call it Waldorf system. systems, right? Waldorf or the Steiner, Steiner system. Yeah. Systems, okay. uh, the emphasis is on really building up the child's physicality. So they're allowed to run and play. Mm -hmm. And their play, uh, mm -hmm. which is also echoed by other um, uh, education uh, pioneers like Maria Montessori is their play is their, their work. work and how they learn to socialize how they learn to engage how they learn to 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 express emotions is through the play that they do rather than other educational systems that tend to over intellectualize the child at okay. a very early uh, okay, okay. age and we do know for a fact or we are sure that seven years is zero to seven is the right age for them to play and participate yes. and learn from experiences rather from road methods. Yes. We, don't yes. we do know that for sure. How do yes. we know that for sure? Uh, this, again, this is based on um, Steiner's Steiner. observation of the, the, the child and his own um, study showing that uh, the, the human uh, is, uh, if you divide it into um, seven year segments, zero to seven is when the child's physicality is the most important to develop. Mm -hmm. Um, 7 to 14 is when their uh, emotions, feeling lives, their yes, feeling um, lives uh, develop. Mm. And then 14 to 21, it's their the thinking, thinking lives. So in that way, you are able to create a holistic uh, approach mm -hmm. to uh, addressing the needs of the child in different phases of their lives. So that mm. makes sense to me. I mean, I, I've raised three kids and I've mm. raised them well. I never know until a long time from now <laughs> and today maybe they seem all right but i don't know so uh, <laughs> god bless <laughs> god. they're not watching it yeah they're good kids i love them huh? three kids so zero to seven physical physical growth uh seven to fourteen emotional fourteen 
to 21 intellectual. Mm -hmm. That means making the right choices. But uh, 7 to 14, figuring out what they're feeling or what others are sensing and feeling. That's it? Yeah? Yes. That's it. Now, uh, compare this to the traditional form of education. Are we not employing that in schools, colleges today across the world? Or how much of it are we aware of? What, what's, the, what's the proportion? What's the ratio well, of it being applied today and it being applied yeah. in the Steiner system? Well, in, uh, in my belief, in my studying, trying diff to look at different educational systems, what I noticed is, is that old school or traditional methods are subject-centric. And these are dictated by the, mm. the, the determinants of society. So in different parts of the world, we have different emphasis. But generally, they're subject-based. Mm. In the more, let's say, non-traditional methods, like Montessori, like Waldorf, there's a focus on the child-centric mm -hmm. model, progressive mm -hmm. education. Uh, many of these great philosophers were turn-of-the-century philosophers, but at their time, they were ahead of their time. And they were looking for a more holistic, more naturalistic, and more sustainable uh, educational methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's many different mechanical things mm -hmm. that are different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have multiple grades within a single classroom. There's all mm -hmm. different techniques, but these are really the, uh, they're, they're less substantive than the underpinnings or the philosophy that it, uh, underlies the educational method. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm a product of the traditional education. <laughs> 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 yes. We all I are. Hope <laughs> As I'm uh, moving towards my destiny, the one you mentioned, I feel that there was a lot of things that I should have known a long time mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. So uh, what are the results of Waldorf systems or Steiner systems currently? Are there any uh, success stories that you can tell us about? Mm. Here in the well Philippines, <laughs> some guys, some ladies. May I speak uh, in particular regarding my own children? And sure, I'm not sure ahead, if you'd call them day. successes right day. away, but... Um, I can see that um, in their development, I find, yeah, you can truth, look at I notes. find truth in the 0 to 7, 7 to 14. It's fine to look at notes. Yeah. <laughs> in my <laughs> school of <laughs> thinking, it's absolutely okay to look at notes. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, because so that's the left brain that yeah, means yeah, about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I see the value of um, really paying um, attention to the 0 to 7 years of um, childhood wherein they're free to play and really um, enjoy be being children. And then at seven, to when they reach this age, a certain age, they mature. Mm. And then eventually they become ready for really higher thinking. And mm. I see that in my sort of an experiment said on my children <laughs> with the... Glad you yeah. <laughs> takes. How many do you have? <laughs> I have three. Okay. And um, I have one in college and I have two in high school. And um, as far as I can see, um, I think the education, uh, the Waldorf education has done them really um, Did the one in college go through Steiner system? Yes, she or did. Or did you adopt it much later? She uh, did. She did. She so did. So uh, what kind of a person is she today? Uh, without labeling her too much. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see in her that she's not afraid of failing or failure and that they see um, this, um, like, challenges as opportunity. And then um, the confidence that I see in her, like, um, dealing with um, the new adjustments, because when she moved from, she, she went to a traditional school, um, arts and sciences school, when she went to high school. And um, there was an adjustment phase, but then when I asked her, um, there was like, because um, in the Waldorf uh, method, we didn't have any examinations or right. grades. And then yeah. she moved to the traditional school <laughs> where everything was graded. She and did? She did, oh, um, okay. in high school. So, um, and there was a time when there was, um, like the first quarter she was having low grades. And I asked her if she would need some help tutoring. And she said, I think I'm only adjusting to this new setup. Wow. So that and was then through so enough yes, and yeah, through yeah, enough right. she she did um, became an honor student after a while. And then in college now yes. she said I was asking her, so who's the best in your class? And she said, um, no not it, this is not like high school. Here yes, in college applause, <laughs> applause, applause. in college no best, yeah. yeah. She said, um, in high school I think we compete with each other also. There's competition among the, the students of the class, but in college, she said, um, the competition is within, I mean, with yourself. 
So I can see that in a but way. Isn't that yeah. brilliant? It's so profound. She's <laughs> like a swami. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> sure swami enough, at the age of 14, 14 to 21, they're very ready to get to, to learn, to absorb all this knowledge that's thrown to them. But I actually, when you started to share a story about your college going daughter, I thought that maybe she was a non Steiner student and sure. now she is. But no. you're saying it is the other way around. Yes. She was a Steiner student and now she's yes. not. Uh -huh. So the question that I want to raise is that can a person move from, uh, can a child move from traditional schooling to Steiner form of education back and forth? Is it okay if they don't go through the zero to seven initiation of the physicality of the child and just come uh, in? Is that fine? Well, we yes. Um, yeah. we, uh, we say that even just a few years of Waldorf education really does the child a lot of good. And I think um, for the children who have moved from a traditional school to the Waldorf, we've had children like that who had the burnout syndrome. At the age of seven, nine. At the age, 11. yes, at yeah. around that age. I want, I want this to know. <laughs> I want this to be seen, just in case. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Sorry. Um, so when they move there um, to the Waldorf system from a traditional um, school, they benefited a lot. And we, the the teachers I, from um, my class, I mean our class, in in Waldorf before with my mm -hmm. kids, said that the children have re really flourished. Yeah. So uh, no resistance from her or from her barcada and not no major challenges. Who are you? You sound so Swami-like. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I'm Swami and I don't get mixed with ordinary well, folks. Well, they, co they come to our house and they say, oh, y this house looks like a Waldorf school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a different setting. Roger, you have a three-year-old child, yes. and yet you claim to be a Waldorf parent. Or <laughs> one aspiring. Of aspiring Waldorf <laughs> parent. Uh, how are you giving him this wonderful experience? Now well, uh, you know, my, my take is, is that many kids are pushed way too soon. Uh, my own sister's children, you know, from an early age, are sitting there. That makes me feel <laughs> <lame. laughs> already. I've been to take my kids to the right schools <laughs> and things like this, and yeah. doing extracurricular. Yeah. And really, uh, what I embrace about the Waldorf, thing, Waldorf method is, is that one, I started. It's a co-parenting experience. I started with my son in school, in a play school, at age one. Mm -hmm. You went there. I went there. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And you know, <laughs> you knit, and you have you know experiences, and a lot of focus on arts, a lot of focus on creativity, right? right? And tools that I think are going to be much more sustainable and important when my child is an adult than mm -hmm. specific early knowledge. Mm -hmm. He can learn specific early knowledge later. But right now, I really want him to be a, you know, a good human being. And I've even heard it said that, you know, in a Waldorf school, how you're ranked, if you were even ranked, compared to the other children, is how much compassion you have for others. Oh, she, you might, that, that sounds like Mother Teresa. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you're right, you're right. I'm, I'm just thinking that uh, uh, if I hadn't been trained, if I had been given all this first seven years to play, Mm. as much as I wanted to or uh, be able to uh, become aware of my emotions and my imaginations from 7 to 14. Perhaps I wouldn't have the knee gaps in my personality that I feel I have today. Or sometimes people notice that, hey Ranju, why do you want to play so much? So <laughs> is, that, is, that a, is that a living practice? <laughs> or that's not a problem, serious stuff, no? No, no. Arrested yeah. development. You know, I mean, this yeah. is <laughs> conventional <laughs> theory <laughs> believes yeah. that, you know, that if you don't, if you're not allowed to pass through certain essential stages of development, mm. that you will seek those out later po point. Yeah. And it, yeah. you know, being a, a prankster and a playful <laughs> person in your serious, you know, early age not work years, well, well, not, well, yeah, not as conducive. Madam Sujata Mukhi. Oh, I thought I was a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor Mukhi, doctor Mukhi. Uh, your involvement in this. Uh, um, you are an administrator and you've been in the... I'm actually, yes, I am uh, connected with a uh, daycare that's in Makati, a, yeah. a Steiner-inspired daycare in Makati called St. Mikhail Playhouse. Yeah. And I, I, I'd like to say I met Waldorf or I met all of this study. What prompted me to meet 
that, you know, and to be involved in that was really the birth of my, my niece, mm -hmm. um, the, the older uh, daughter of my, of my younger brother. And when I saw the incredible intelligence in her eyes as a one-year-old, as a two-year-old, I'm thinking, what is... She was is exposed to the Steiner no, system. No, she, she, she was yeah. not. But it was my own impetus to think that what is the right educational methodology that How would How many years ago was this? Oh, this was... Uh, I think the first time I attended any of my Waldorf-related courses was back in the late 90s. This was back in the late 90s. So does you see the brilliance, the sparkle that you see in children's eyes sometimes disappears because of the pressure of education? Yeah, because I and do. you saw it and you wanted to sustain it. Uh, I, I'm not saying that particularly. Yeah. It was just that uh, when, when, when I saw how, how wonderfully intelligent she was at that age, I was beginning to ask myself, is there a kind of educational method that allows that to fully flower and to let her be who she is and not quashing? That 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 um, that, so, that impulse. So brilliant, yeah. Yes. So and then I, I discovered Waldorf education. In fact, in the early 2000s, I had a little pet dream to be um, uh, a Waldorf teacher myself. But certain circumstances didn't allow that. But interestingly enough, as part of my own personal destiny, here I am connected with uh, with a, a daycare that may soon be a kindergarten that is working under the principles of um, Steiner education. And it's one of the most gratifying things I've ever done. Mm -hmm. I personally, I don't work with the children directly, but I hear the fabulous stories from the teachers, including the parents, Malou yeah. and our wonderful teachers at the daycare that talk about how the children really come into their own without getting burnt out. Uh, so by the time they're seven years old, they are ripe. They are ripe for learning, ripe for reading, ripe mm -hmm. for writing, because they're just so ready to take it on. My, I come from a town called Pune, and there was a Swami there called Rajneesh. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He moved to California, and his, his um, ashram, his retreat, they had kids back in the 70s just doing that, people from all across the world bring the children and they play and have mm -hmm. fun so perhaps he was conversant with the Steiner system at that time. Uh, maybe though I you have you to, smiling yes, did, did only I to make comparisons between Steiner and, and Osho <laughs> and Rajneesh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I saw the kids, I don't know, I'm just asking. <laughs> different, different, yeah? Um, I, I don't know about uh, his, um, uh, what his system is but yeah. the, the idea is really to allow them to play but it's not just free play, in fact one of the emphasis of early childhood education under um, uh, the Steiner concept is to create, in fact, a, a strong sense of daily rhythm for the child so that the child feels safe, the child knows that there's something to look forward to, there's mm. a time for play, there's a time for work, there's a time for eating, there's a time for alone time. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you go to any uh, uh, Steiner kindergarten or daycare, you'll see yeah. that there really is um, a rhythm that the teachers follow so that the child has a certain stability in the way the day is run. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Let's take a little break on that note. The, we talk about rhythm and what happens in a Steiner school. Let's get the details on that after this break. So stay watching. This is Expire Insights. I'm your host, Rajum Manti, and we are with Dr. Simon, Ms. Sujata Mukhi, and Dr. Malu. And we are talking about Steiner systems. Stay watching. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome back to Experience Science. We are with Dr. Simon, Ms. Sujata Muki, and Dr. Malu Madrano. And Sujata was just telling us about the rhythm that is monitored or managed in a Steiner school. So tell us about it. Um, I think Dr. Malu, yeah. yes, will talk about it. Well, that. when we speak of rhythm, um, it's different from schedule. Rhythm is like flowing from one activity to the next. There is like a, a flow. Mm. It's not like English and then math and then, you know, the subjects all lined up. Yeah. Um, this one is like according, it's like breathing in and breathing out. It's the rhythm of the heart. It's contraction and expansion. So this is what we follow. That sounds really... <laughs> so you have a school that goes on uh, heartbeats? Yes, because we follow the children's rhythm. You know? would, would, would 50 different children have different uh, rhythms? No, um, I think we all breathe in and out. Oh. Okay. No, no, I'm just <laughs> and there's day and uh, night. Intellectual yeah. rhythms uh, is not. Maybe well, learning uh, yes, capacities. Um, every, every household has their own rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, in this day and age, I think people have lost that. 
um, with the call centers at night and everything. So this is what we want to bring back to to the to life, to the mm -hmm. re the regularity of things. So um, in the daycare, this is um, the children are follow this rhythm so that you at call home it daycare. Yeah, well, um, daycare. what we have is uh, a daycare. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's uh, yeah. Sorry, so I'm I'm because I work in, at St. Michael Daycare, and I'm a nurturer, so I would. The pictures are also from the daycare, so I would be in reference to. I'm glad you mentioned <laughs> the pictures. Sorry. You have the pictures lined up one at a time, so you can describe yeah. the rhythm okay. and the heartbeat as the pictures yes. come out. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is the daycare pictures. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. What comes after daycare? Um, do you kindergarten. Do you kindergarten. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just kindergarten. Yeah. Um, oh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this oh. is outdoor free play. Slowly picture yeah. one at a time. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so in the rhythm, we would have. You know, let's go with this picture. What's happening here? Oh, this is um, the outdoor um, free play, but at the same time, the children and the teachers are doing meaningful work. So the teacher would be doing some gardening or scrubbing the the tiles or the wooden floors, mm. and then the children would be playing, but then when they see the teacher doing something meaningful, mm. they would want to imitate and join in and get involved. The location of this, this, is, the sand this is at our daycare. There's a uh, patio yeah. that we have outside. This and is the St. Michael's. Yes, Mikhail. this is Mikhail. Mikhail. Yes. So, okay. um, yeah, so they play, they're allowed to play with what all the elements, the water, dirt, oh. yeah, earth. Mm. And these the are what? nurturers. And yeah. what? Uh, water, earth, earth uh -oh, sand. Uh -huh. So they're yeah. allowed to, uh, to uh, experience tactile all sensations these, yes. uh -huh. since it's physical body that they need to mm -hmm. work with. Uh, those are just the pictures. Those are yeah, the and wonderful <laughs> nurturers at St. Mikhail. One more time, out. some of the <laughs> pictures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the first one is um, they're in the park. So they're allowed uh, uh, to move freely. Mm. So um, because at 0 to 7, their work is really to. Um, run and to run, change. yes, and to move and to coordinate all these. Seven years of fun and freedom. Yes. <laughs> With oh, the rhythm. Awesome. <laughs> With the rhythm, in a rhythm. Okay, yeah. post uh, that. Yeah. Post that. Post seven, how do you nurture their emotion and imagination? Because that's the stage you mentioned, right? Yes. How do you go about doing that? Thank you, yeah, with the pictures, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. How do you go oh, about it? Can, can we just talk a little bit about the dolls with no faces? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. If you okay. notice the dolls... We don't need to hold it up. You can yeah. talk yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, you'll find this in any kindergarten or daycare. You'll have dolls that don't have um, um, uh, expressions on their simple. faces. And, and the simple explanation there is that you want to allow the child to be able to mm -hmm. um, act his own or her own imagination by by not uh, boxing what a happy expression looks like yeah. or what a sad expression looks like. It's the child allowing himself to be able to express that particular um, feeling that they're having and to project their own imagination. Yeah. Oh, the I need child. to I need to understand. Yes, so, so you're saying that the school system provides a doll without a face, or they make a doll without a face? Um, yeah, may I? Yeah, um, yeah yes, the toi we, our, our toys are open-ended. Meaning right. there's a stick could be a toy, yeah. and there's it can be a lot of things to a child. Mm. So their imagination is now nurtured and it's developed. Mm -hmm. When they look at a doll without a face, then they're able to imagine if the doll is crying. It depends on what they, they want. They, they, they transfer their imagination onto that doll. Yes. And yes. That's, thus they have to imagine, they have to stretch it. Yes, a, as opposed to a doll that, that has a smiling face or oh. can cry right. or can... So no, no creating eyes. silos, no, no setting up, setting it up. No, them, yeah. So we have wood, wood blocks, we have shells, natural all materials. natural materials that are open-ended and allows the child to imagine what it can do with that particular right. piece yes. of uh, and, and no material. cartoon characters, <laughs> so that oh. if, if uh, a so child... So no creating of stereotypes, like yeah, this guy looks like yes. Mickey Mouse, yes, or, like it's like or that's a guy with a turban there. Right, mm. and yeah. that a mouse has its own essence, which is independent of what Walt Disney says yes. it is. And for the child to be able to have a direct experience of what yeah. a mouse mm. is, or yeah. of <laughs> what um, other uh, animals yeah. are without the imposition from media. Mm. Oh, I get it, yeah. yeah. There's like an aha yeah. moment for just me like now. Yeah. Uh, when when we speak of Snow White, immediately what comes into our mind is, is the image of yes, the right image right of yeah. Snow White from Walt Disney. But if you read the book to a child and the child not having watched any of these um, 
moving pictures of oh. Snow White, then the child is able to create in his own imagination so, what so you're, Snow White. You're also removing any societal conditioning, however subtle it is. You're keeping the child away from that. To help him develop. Would, would it that not imagine. like uh, restrict him? Or isn't isn't the societal uh, aren't societal circumstances part of the life that they would face eventually? Is that no, I, I think yeah. that's an accurate assessment, but the point is the child will have a whole life to become acclimated to, to yeah. uh, marketing, to Disney, uh, to right. okay. uh, you know, being sold products. But in this time when we're trying to develop the mind right, and right, the right, neurons right. are forming in the brain, we would like them to activate thus, creativity. Thus, thus there will not be any obsession or attachment mm. with Barbie. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Barbie. And there's Barbie white, the or is she brown, Barbie. or is she uh -huh. yellow? Oh and boy. so that we're trying to also bridge the differences between are, people. Are I any so of your advertisers? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I think it I sounds like we're going to so wait, so, I, so uh, w this is quite challenging for you, people who are behind the curtains yes. of a child. So that you require higher sensitivity within you yes. to be able to manage that, to be able to discern and say, this is truly authentically natural, and this is not. It has been occurred. Yeah. So uh, my the question now is now how do you become <laughs> you as teachers and nurturers? How do you get to that stage? How many paradigms did you have to uh, <laughs> dump? Yeah. Right away, for me, I had to, no television. Yeah. You know, I had to let go of that. You know, I mean, that's that's a big one. But the idea that if I'm giving but When my did this happen, Roger? When my Zach child... Zach was born. Yeah. You surrendered TV. I surrendered TV for him. Yeah. And in the presence of him, and there's no TV playing while he's, you know, in, you know... Until he gets older, in essence. I like that. Mm -hmm. And the idea again to stimulate, you know, creativity and to and to not formulate biases and opinions and uh, become a passive learner, but rather become an active learner, an experiential learner. Mm -hmm. And that's really, I think, one of the essences. But fortunately for me, I had no TV when I was. No, I I Many of us. And and I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Just going back to the I'm a TV baby. <laughs> so from zero to seven, the child learns through imitation. Yeah, I know lots of yeah. people yeah. here in this country where there was TV back in the 70s and where I come from, outer space, there was none. <laughs> uh, they they speak in the tone and the accent oh, and the uh, thought processes of what was that game show? That morning show with the big bird and all. That's what Sesame they Street. Street. Sesame yeah. Street. So many yeah. grew up on Sesame Street. Yeah. But Sesame Street wasn't that. Did that not take into account uh, Steiner's philosophy when it was uh, being designed? The programs were designed. People people regard, appreciated the no, learning think, process. Uh, yeah, Street, I think yeah. Sesame Street also did um, did its part because they talked about community issues. They were talking about mm -hmm. the environment. Mm -hmm. They were talking mm -hmm. about tolerance. All, all kinds of things. I, I was a Sesame Street kid. That's why mm -hmm. I ah, am this ah, way. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, 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 <laughs> present tense. Oh, the count just died. <laughs> I yeah. just read it. But at the same time, if, that, if a child learns from imitation, then you were saying earlier, you people behind the curtain, this must be very difficult. It is a constant process of self analysis. Our, our teachers, our nurturers, all Waldorf teachers are constantly doing the self examination. And as you said, breaking down their own paradigms because yes. a child has no filters. Even if you don't say anything, you walk into the room and you've had a hard day and life was difficult and you're looking depressed and more and, and you try to it, cover it, it up. The them. child is like yeah, a sponge. They just yeah. absorb everything wow. at some level. Wow, but wow. At, at the same time, the there's no imposition on the parents that you have to get throw out your 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 mm -hmm. lead TV or your you know there's no imposition that you you have to eat this kind of food at home not at all. Oh, it, you, it you're already a disturbed and a gone <laughs> case. So we yes. don't worry about you. Let's look at the Let's future. Let's look at the child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but then we just um, in parent. We gave up on your society. Yeah. Yeah. Up yes, in parent teacher conferences, the teachers do tell uh, talk to the parents and have a conversation and and do feedback that there are certain behaviors of your child that's showing up in the classroom, you may want to take a look at certain um, rhythms or certain activities that are going on at home that are influencing the way the child is. And it's always up to the parent then to make the decision how much of it they, they're willing to let go. Roger, I think, you know, just watches TV privately when Zach is not <laughs> around. But it, it really depends on the parent's choice working together with the, the nurturers and the teachers at a Waldorf school. Sounds really good. I like it.
Now, how do we take it to the rest of the world? What are the steps we need to do? How do we spread <laughs> this? How do we make uh, this grow? What are the plans? I mean, I'm sure you must be discussing uh, that. Yes, in fact, Let's there, make is this a living there, thing. there is an uh, association of Waldorf schools that is forming in the Philippines. They are still in the early stages, but the idea is to be for uh, this group to be able to come together and really set some standards of what school would have the right to carry the word um, Steiner or Steiner inspired or a Waldorf inspired. Um, school and uh, this group is coming up with the standards of what creates a Waldorf curriculum and what would be the, 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 the requirements that a teacher would have to go through in order to be part of a Waldorf school. So all of that um, is in conversation. In the Philippines. Yes, there's yeah. even a group called the Rudolf Steiner Education Program um, headed by the pioneers of Waldorf Early Childhood Education, Delia and Jake Tan. And what they do is that every year they, they give training to teachers, to parents, to would-be teachers on early childhood education. Uh, in fact, they have one coming up in January. And here, um, we hope that it will continue to produce teachers that are rooted in the system so that when they start their own schools or when they go out and, and teach and join Waldorf schools, that they have um, an understanding, not only an intellectual understanding, but a holistic understanding of what is the value of this education, mm -hmm. what it does to, to a child, mm -hmm. what it can do for society. Yeah, yeah but um, I, my take on this is that it has also attracted, I think that the parents or the society is ready for this kind of education because a lot of Waldorf schools have been popping up yes. everywhere sure. in the country. And they, they in don't the require any certification, any approval. Uh, they they just uh, yeah, globally, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there is no uh, global certifying body, but this yeah. association is working towards coming up with those standards. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, what is happening with these initiatives is that they invite um, uh, this particular group, the R-STEP group, mm -hmm. uh, to, to this come is a and global uh, group? No, no, this is a local, local group headed by the pioneers. Step? Yes, our, our step, our Rudolf Steiner Education mm. in the Philippines. Oh. And they go around the it's Philippines um, observing classes uh, and, and act as mentors to make sure that they really are uh, imbibing uh, the system and are doing the curriculum mm. accordingly. Good. What but is this doing for you today? Uh, where do you get your fulfillment? You seem very passionate about <laughs> it, you know, you <laughs> like in <laughs> it. Uh, so what yeah. is it doing for you and oh. what kind of future is it creating for the three of you? Roger, you might want to say something. You've been sitting there <laughs> being happy with this. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this notion of lifelong love and learning and this idea of co-parenting is really, in, you know, inspiring that as you're bringing your child up, you're learning with them. And I think this is part of the reason why there's a big homeschooling m movement uh, worldwide now, yeah. is that more parents want to take a more active role in the education of their children. Uh, so so it, it's defining and refining you as a human being yeah, in the process. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I like that yeah. choice of words, refining <laughs> and defining. <laughs> and, uh, I see the sense of it because I can feel it. I want to participate if I can uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Sir. And, uh, you know, I mean, maybe not each and every one of us was placed on this earth. <laughs> Our purpose may not be to be a student uh, or to be a teacher, but we can really uh, model our, with our children. They're going to emulate the behaviors mm. that we have. So I think this is really important that we reflect internally, you know, what is it that I am representing and how am I being? And, you know, I, I think there are just so many beneficial things in Waldorf education. Community service is an integral part for the children. Wow. Uh, awareness to the community, connection to the community, social change and activity. So you can't help if your child's going through this experience and they're asking for your help in homework that you're going to be, you know, uh, also more, uh, more aware yourself. Mm. Mm. More, more aware. Fantastic. It's like a lot more greener. <laughs> spiritually greener uh, humanity. Yeah, yeah I guess. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, I have loved everything. I like what you have said. It's
inspired me. Uh, is there anything else that you want to tell me about the Steiner system from the um, Philippines? I, I got three minutes ago. Yes, <laughs> I, I feel that parents yeah. uh, need, do need to do their research. And parents? I, yes. Yeah. And, and All I parents. This is your telling them. Yes, yes. Okay. And as a coordinator for the daycare, I see that parents are really looking for something that is more sustaining and more nurturing for their child. And we have Waldorf schools from all the way up to Baguio, uh, to initiatives in, uh, in, in Luzon, to Kidapawan and Davao and Mindanao. We have it in the Visayas. The information is out there on the internet. And if it's not, you know, we, we can find ways to get that information out. So um, you, you're, you're inviting everyone to partake of this, absolutely. you know? Absolutely. And, and have another think yes, about this. And do yeah. trial classes. See if this is something that resonates with you and then make that intelligent decision. Is it expensive? Um, is it easily I, accessible? I think like the, for example, the, the schools that we have here are at par with some of the other private institutions. Mm. There is also another Waldorf initiative in, in Sariaya, Quezon, where they're t they really work with in, uh, indigent Communi um, yeah. communities. So it, it really depends. Mm. Our daycare, uh, we are, I think, a little on the higher end, but we're certainly not at the level of international schools and um, uh, these other uh, high-end mm. schools. Uh, we're somewhere between the private schools and the international schools. Okay. Also because daycare tends to be really more expensive. Across the world, what, what is the hottest mm. spot in the world for Steiner systems? Um, Where would somebody go? to get the right wisdom. I think interestingly enough, the whole uh, Waldorf movement is now even going towards Asia. We have schools in China, we have schools in Japan, Japan. in Korea. Mm. We have schools in India. There's a very big Waldorf yeah. movement also in India. Um, we have um, an art workshop that's coming up in October, and we have participants from Taiwan, from India, from from uh, from Malaysia. So there's there's a very strong um, pull, I think, that this um, system has, not only for Waldorf education, but for Steiner initiatives on the whole. Mm -hmm. Time to make your announcements. Yes. Thank so you very much. Yeah. That was very good. Yeah. <laughs> so Inspired and touched. So <laughs> time to make your announcements. Time to invite people to whatever you are creating for them, yes. uh, starting with you or um, Dr. Okay. Malu. Um, you can uh, even yes. flash your flyers, I'm fine with it. Oh, okay, yeah. I wish I brought She's them, but I don't yeah, have them. But go ahead. Yeah. But uh, we'd love to uh, invite especially um, these uh, parents of young children. Check out St. Michael Playhouse. We're located in Makati. Where the, um, we, we were the first Steiner daycare, meaning this is a place where you can put your children from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the in the afternoon and know that if you're a parent that's working, you're leaving them in safe hands. We have wonderful nurturers, wonderful teachers that really care and love each child that comes in. And, and wow. when you talk to any of our nurturers, you know the, the depth of the feeling and, and regard that they have for each child. We have a parent-child pro program for um, uh, Website. Teacher Malou Website. handles that. Yeah. Uh, we, we have, we're on Facebook, St. Mikael Playhouse Makati. Yeah. And uh, please do look for us there, and, um, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And check out all the other Waldorf schools that are, that are here in the Philippines, too. Fantastic. You know the website, Dr. Malou? Um, uh, we we have yeah, a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our what do we look for? Yes, uh, yeah. Saint Michael. Uh, ESIP is where Saint Michael is, but ESIP is a separate entity uh -huh. from the Saint Michael Playhouse. We're on Saint Michael Playhouse Makati on Facebook. So uh, you had a l very nice quote here about children and children's growing up. So you want to close with that, Dr. Roger? It's nice. It's right yeah. here. Yeah. You are, you're ready for it. There you go. So uh, uh, we are almost done with the show, and we'll let these people read the code. And thank you for watching Expat Insights. Next week on Expat Insights, we'll have Dr. Michael and Roseanne Holmes to talk about the art of selling, mindful selling. Uh, let's go back to that code before we... Uh, receive the child in reverence. Educate the child in love. Release the child in freedom. Amen. Godspeed. Thank you very much for being on Expat Insight. Ms. Thank Moki, you so much, Dr. Sim, uh, Dr. Roger <laughs> Simon, and Dr. Malumatwa. Good, Good night. Good night. And Mabuhai.